Hi, and welcome to the second half of uh, Spotlight on Bennington. I'm John Shanahan, the downtown director of the Better Bennington Corp. And this month, we promised you uh, a show that's twice as long as normal. That's because we had uh, too much to show you. We're still in Grace Christian School. And again, we'd like to thank Joyce Lloyd for taking us on a tour. However, um, there's big things happening here at Grace that we had mentioned earlier. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Mark Ballard. Hi. Mark. Nice to meet you, John. Nice to meet you, and thank you very much for meeting with us today. Our, our privilege. Oh. Well, we have a show. Uh, we, we're the Better Bennington Corporation. We're a downtown organization. Mm -hmm. uh, but we take uh, Alicia Romack from Legacy Images of Vermont, and I take the camera out of downtown once in a while when something big is happening in Bennington okay. that a lot of people don't see as they're just driving around town. Sure. Uh, as I mentioned, we're still in the library of Grace Christian School on uh, Kosher Drive. But, Mark, why don't you let the community know what's going on here? It's already been in the paper once. Okay. Give us a little bit more information. All right. Well, we are working with Grace Christian School. We have uh, uh, signed a lease earlier this week for the third and fourth floors, which we are currently working to renovate uh, to open a, a four-year college. Fantastic. And I, uh, I was here earlier this week. And um, you had crews, volunteers that come in from all over the country. Yes. And uh, I, we talked earlier when they did Capstone Church up in North Bennington. Right. It was the same thing. So I got to meet a lot of people that way. Okay, great. And while I met with Joyce earlier, you had a large crew of volunteers here. We did. And all the demolition is done. It, well, um, about half of the demolition is done. Uh, we, we've got more demolition to do. Uh, but they, uh, they were a hardworking team. And they not only worked with us, but they also worked with two churches in the area while they were here. And did some projects for the churches? That's right, that's Fan right. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, what is it they're doing? They're the, the team yeah. that was here? Well, they, they're called the Carpenter's Hands, and uh, they just volunteer to do basically two kinds of things. Uh, they do a lot of disaster relief work. Um, our, our group of Baptists actually is the second largest disaster relief group in, in the world, really. And uh, usually when a disaster hits, the Red Cross is called by the government, mm -hmm. and then the Red Cross calls our guys. And uh, this team is specific, uh, works with that out of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, they don't do just that disaster relief. They also uh, take their vacation times to come to places like Vermont mm -hmm. and help uh, Christian organizations with building demo that kind of stuff so for us specifically what they were doing was kind of uh, to help us and grace christian school uh, they were uh, building bookshelves uh, and uh, storage areas for grace and then also uh, doing demo work for us okay. ready for your getting uh, getting ready for our our remodel of the third and fourth floor yes you know, it's exciting there's a lot going on at grace and it's nice to see that this is happening yes. too and uh, I kind of liked you. I said I'd start off with a, um, a different order, and I brought you right up to the college part. But uh, I'd like to introduce you to, uh, or get you to know Mark a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from? Uh, absolutely. I grew up in Colorado, uh, Pueblo, Colorado. Most people think of that as the place to send for government books. Oh, that's the first thing <laughs> I thought of <laughs> in those TV commercials. Uh, that's right. Uh, so that's our claim to fame, that in the State Fair of Colorado, but uh, about 100 miles south of Denver. And I uh, grew up in that town and around that town. And uh, also was, uh, my parents were farmers and then part of the time we lived in town. I'm the youngest of nine kids and uh, grew up uh, in, a, in a Christian home, uh, going to church and those kinds of things. But when uh, I was a teenager, I began to preach in local churches around Southern Colorado. So that included, um, uh, the Pueblo area, as well as actually into Kansas and New Mexico a little bit. And so all through my teenage years, uh, that's, that's what I did. And uh, shortly after graduating high school, I moved to Texas and uh, actually went to Bible college there. Uh, Is that where you got your funny accent? I actually, that's where I started getting my funny oh, accent. Okay. Right. So I spent, my wife, I was married, and my wife and I went to... Uh, Texas and as soon as we got there they said you're not from around here are you because we had no accent we were from Colorado yeah. and after six years we had the Texas accent eventually we moved to North Carolina and they said you're not from here are you <laughs> and uh, so so well, really it's in New England. <laughs> that's right a new one. and uh, so well, I've been in New England since uh, uh, 1998 and uh, during that time we've really grown to love all of New England uh, all of all of that time until recently has been spent in New Hampshire 
And so uh, my wife and I started a church in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Uh, this was our fourth, per our fourth plant that we have done personally in different parts of the country. And uh, started from scratch, just the two of us. And uh, then out of that church, it helped start other churches around the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we also had a Bible Institute that we started uh, there that was not accredited. It was never intended to be accredited. It was just to provide additional training for uh, lay leaders and, and pastors, uh, ongoing education, that kind of thing for the pastors. And uh, so we were in New Hampshire and, uh, and did that for, uh, well, from 1998 until last uh, June is when we uh, uh, left uh, Christian Fellowship Baptist Church and begin to prepare for the college. Mm -hmm. Where's your family living now? Uh, my family and I still live in New Hampshire yeah, right now. We, we actually uh, live near Concord, uh, New Hampshire, which is where my, my main office is located right now. Uh, we opened up um, an office there in June, June 1st of uh, last year, mm -hmm. of 2010. And we begin our search for where we would put the, the college, what, what place. And uh, really, uh, we, we looked at all the New England states, uh, but we really narrowed to New Hampshire, Vermont, and Rhode Island. And those were the three states that were primarily in our consideration. Why did you narrow it down to those three? And I'm going to get you, what I told you earlier, why did you narrow it down to Bennington? Sure, sure. Well, you know, really our, our passion is New England. I, I love New England. Uh, interestingly enough, even though I grew up in Colorado, uh, you, uh, some of your folks will like this. Uh, I chose the Boston Red Sox when I was seven years old as my team, you know. <laughs> um, Coming home. <laughs> in football, I had two teams, and the Pats was one of them, and uh, the Cowboys was the other. So grew up, lived in Dallas for a while, and then I've been in New England now for um, over 13 years. So uh, New England's always intrigued me uh, because of the history here, mm -hmm. because of the founding of our nation. Uh, and then uh, really for the, the role that New England has played in Christianity, in education, and even in Baptist life. You know, Baptist started in New England. Uh, you have uh, uh, the first Baptist in America, uh, Star Providence, Rhode Island, and really emphasized the importance of, of freedom of religion and uh, the state not forming a religion and so forth. And those Baptist mm -hmm. principles are something that, that I grew up with. and. Uh, uh, had a high regard for New England because of those, and uh, that was part of, um, of my desire to always know more about New England. And so after we had lived here a few years, uh, we said, you know what, this is home, and this is where we'll spend the rest of our life. And so through that process then, uh, we began to, to see the need for this college, and uh, then as we did that, we began to say, where would we put it? Um, and, and really, we, we looked in a lot of different places, just seeking God and looking for what was available. And um, uh, we just narrowed it to three specific properties we were looking at. And one of them was in, uh, actually two of them originally were in Concord area, mm -hmm. and one was in Rhode Island. But we had heard about um, Bennington. I had driven through Bennington many times, uh, was very intrigued with uh, the history of Bennington but didn't really know about Grace Christian School until April of this last year. Uh, had heard of it, uh, had heard that they had two floors that they would like to see a college on, mm -hmm. but that's really all I knew. And uh, I was in the area uh, doing a weekend seminar for um, uh, North Pondle Congregational Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I was there, I got to know some of the people here at Grace and, and learned their desire to see a college on the third and fourth floor and the more we uh, uh, talked together the more we realized that this was a perfect fit for them and for us and uh, so that kind of brought us to to Bennington uh, where I was intrigued with the history and then I saw what was happening at Grace and said man this is a great program uh, we can complement each other uh, in our program that we plan as well as in what they already have going on. Yeah, and we, we had talked earlier also about uh, you, your plans for opening is your goal is 2013. We have uh, since our start that has been our, our plan. Thus, our name is Project Launch 13, and so our our plan has been to uh, open in August of 2013. I, I'll tell you, we actually are reassessing that right now, and uh, wondering if. Um, 
But we haven't made a determination, but we are reassessing the opening date. That's that's all I can really say at this point. Okay, and I understand, and it's mm -hmm. not a negative thing at all. So it's right. good to hear. Yeah. Um, can you speak ballpark what your goal is for the first year enrollment, or mm -hmm. uh, as far as teachers or professors, mm -hmm. um, uh, majors that will be offered, mm -hmm. what people can expect? Absolutely, absolutely, love to do it. Uh, we, we look to open with three bachelor's degrees. So our first bachelor's degree would be in the area of biblical studies, and there will be a diff few different tracks that a person could take. Then our next bachelor's degree would be in the area of education, and we would have both a secondary and an elementary ed. So again, you see how that we can complement the school here with that. Mm -hmm. And then our third area would be in, in the area of music, and uh, that would both prepare someone to teach music, like in a public school setting, as well as um, uh, help out in a church setting in the music department as well. Great. So that, that, they're all very strong in this area already, too, mm -hmm. so I can see where it's going to fit in mm -hmm. and work in with everybody in the area. Absolutely. And uh, staff-wise? Staff-wise, absolutely. We, we uh, are in negotiations with several professors, uh, as well as our administrative staff. Uh, most of them are currently serving somewhere, and so uh, until uh, we get a little bit closer, there's a certain point most of them have in their contracts where they notify a school. So I really can't share names at this sure. point, yep. uh, but we do uh, intend to have uh, uh, a, a healthy staff. Um, we, we look in for probably in the beginning about 10 full-time professors plus some administrative staff that could also be professors mm -hmm. and then a, a host of adjunctive professors as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look to launch with about 100 students and then as, as we grow the student body, of course, we'll be growing the, the professors and, and staff of the school mm -hmm. as well. And you mentioned growing the student body. Mm -hmm. that your short-term goal is already moving right along. Mm -hmm. uh, to start off, but uh, when in our original conversation, you also have a long-term goal. We, we do, and uh, you know, uh, we are looking um, uh, to grow to to complement the other two schools in this area, mm -hmm. uh, essentially. And that's one of the exciting things about Bennington as well. I have to tell you, there's a lot of things that played into us deciding to come to Bennington, and one of them is is that there's already three colleges here in town, and uh, two of those being full colleges and then you've got the community college as well but the uh, Bennington College with the four-year program that they have in southern Vermont and uh, so we want to complement that uh, mm -hmm. we, you know we uh, uh, how long it's going to take us to get there and so forth uh, we're still assessing all of that uh, but our goals are to start with 100 students and, and grow so yeah uh, do you have a final goal or well, of course, you, you know it's, it's tough to it's tough to say when when people ask you what is your. And you're final right. Goal. It, it is tough. Actually, if yeah. I ask that question of uh, either one of the college presidents right sure. now, they'd be like, mm -hmm. "Say we want to continue to grow." You yeah. Know? And okay. uh, and so you, you know, it, it depends on it depends on a lot of factors that, that go into that. Obviously, uh, facilities. You know, we're looking for dorm facilities. That plays into it, and everything else as far as. How rapidly a school could grow, mm -hmm. uh, but but certainly we want to grow to to the size of uh, Bennington College in Southern Vermont, somewhere in that range. And you had mentioned dorm facilities, which obviously mm -hmm. aren't going to be on the property of Grace Christian, right? So that's something that, and just for anybody who might be listening, that mm -hmm. may be out there and outside of your purview. Sure. Uh, what is it that you are looking for for the students, or maybe the new faculty that maybe somebody listening? can either contact me to get a hold of you, that might help you sure. along. Sure, absolutely, I appreciate that. Uh, we are looking for really more of a permanent site uh, for uh, our dorms. And so, you know, if we could find something that would work but would have enough land with it that we could add and build on uh, mm -hmm. to meet those goals that we would like to, to get to that size of college. Obviously, on the third and fourth floor here with a little addition we'll be doing you know, we can grow a little bit, but we can't grow to the size of, of Bennington College. So, mm -hmm. so, so we're looking for property as well as uh, a place to house our initial students, um, and and of course to be able to grow with additional dorms on it and library and and full classroom buildings and so forth. So, uh, you know, acreage it, it all depends on the land. Uh, right. Obviously, you know, uh, especially, uh, you know, I've looked at a lot of land in in um, in New Hampshire. 
And land in New Hampshire, if you want 50 buildable acres, you're going to have to find at least 100 acres uh, because there's a lot of wetlands. And so it just, it varied, there's so many variables that go into it. It's hard for me to say we want 50 acres or we want 100 acres. Uh, so we would have to assess the property itself to, to do that. And we've got a great team uh, with uh, architect guys and uh, uh, local guy here, uh, Jerry Fry is our project mm -hmm. manager. Good. And um, then we, we have some other builder guys that, um, and engineers who are helping us in those assessments as, as we have those opportunities. So we're hear. really just getting started on the dorm search though. Right. Well, I got a great team too at the Better Bennington Corp. <laughs> we have a recruitment and retention committee who is way ahead of you. Um, <laughs> we've already actually started designing your downtown campus for <laughs> housing. And uh, as everybody knows, we have um, a beautiful facility. And so, so, so you're paying for it ahead and giving and just giving it to us? Man, sort thank you for of. that donation. But you know, it's, <laughs> it's already there. The buildings are in place, so it's going to be lower cost. And you can grow into it. OK. Um, but some beautiful structures, um, housing, classroom, you got it. And we'll bend over backwards to make sure the kids feel welcome. Uh -huh. Either way, I know you're starting here and we're thrilled sure. that you're coming to Bennington. Sure. Uh, ultimately, uh, we hope that you do grow into the size you want to be and That's love great. to see a part of downtown. Yeah. Um, if people are getting thrown business cards at me, make sure it gets my business card. Um, <laughs> okay. Especially realtors. So if you sure. need any help finding space for the, the new uh, faculty coming in, sure. and uh, if there's any local faculty uh -huh. who would like to be part of your um, uh -huh. vision and project, is there a number where some should they get a hold of you through me, through I, Joyce? Or is actually, the, I tell you what they could do is they could just email me okay. uh, a resume if, if somebody would like to do that. And I, it, I would say not just faculty, but there as we grow, there will be uh, closer to the opening. There will be a lot of other positions as well. Sure. You know, there'll be clerical positions and and janitors and and so other things will come along. Yeah. And uh, certainly, the best way to do that is put together a resume, email it to me m.ballard at pl13.org. Let me give it to you again, m.ballard at pl13.org. All right, and we'd be happy to do that. And of course, uh, our- I'll put that up on the screen. So we okay, to to. great, that'd be good. And um, our, uh, our uh, faculty, as uh, they begin to search after the first of the year or whenever, uh, some of them will begin to come in to help us build the program. Uh, you know, though most of them will be looking for houses right here in Bennington to live in. So, mm -hmm. so we're we believe it'll be a, a good thing for the town as well. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. And uh, you're coming into a great state. I don't know if you heard the good news that we're, I think, the second most fiscally fit state. And I just read that. that paid off. Um, and our realtors have always known that that yeah. we're in so much better shape than the rest of the country that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to start doing this pretty soon. I'm <laughs> glad that you're going to be part of the team uh, to do that. That's great. And you being here is going to be part of that, too. You know, I just read an interesting article. Uh, I thought of thought of our conversation the other day when I read it. Um, in uh, New Hampshire, in uh, the Union Leader this week, they did an article on the role of colleges in a town. Mm -hmm. And specifically, uh, they were looking at Manchester, New Hampshire, and how that the uh, the colleges there have really boosted the economy of the town sure. and uh, you know certainly the the colleges already here do that and we hope to be a part of that as well there is a project that we participate in each year when the students come back it's like a community service day and I just got off the phone yesterday uh, with Bennington College and on August 27th we have 30 students all the students mm -hmm. go out into the community and do some kind of project and 30 of them are interested in coming downtown for the second year, where we're actually taking, what I look at as the worst part of downtown is our alleyways, mm -hmm. and uh, painting them, fixing them up, installing art displays. Wow, that's so great. That even our alleyways will be spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have stuff when your students come to welcome right to town. Absolutely. And then we're gonna go up onto the campuses and uh, welcome them to town, so. That's great. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's there. gonna be a good environment for our kids. Absolutely. Good. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank um, you. Mark, I look forward to doing some work with you. And again, when you need the blueprints for your downtown campus, you just let me know. Right. They're yours and don't charge for those. <laughs> All right. Um, good luck to you and God bless. Thank you. And welcome to Bennington. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Thank you very much for joining us for the second half of our show. I'd like to thank Alicia Womack of Legacy Images of Vermont uh, for helping us produce our show each month. 
Um, join us again in uh, the end of this month, and we're going to do something a little bit different with next month's show. Um, I know you've been hearing lately about uh, some of our local organizations who have all got together to form a joint economic development committee. Uh, soon we'll be doing a press conference over at CAT TV where all the participants will be in one room uh, and there will be a question and answer uh, format uh, for the local media and we'll be playing it instead of our uh, this uh, down uh, spotlight on Bennington uh, for September. Uh, keep an eye out for that. It'll also be appearing on Chamber Chat and on the CAT TV uh, community screen. So it'll be uh, shown quite a bit because uh, a lot of people have a lot of questions. Uh, they're glad to hear that we're all getting together and uh, going to start moving forward. And we apologize for it taking so long to get it out to you, but we wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page and we were all prepared to present to you what our plans are for the future of Bennington. Uh, and we do have Mark Ballard in your vision as part of our future plan, and we'll bring that up during the press conference. Again, thank you, Mark. Thank you to everybody out there, and we'll see you in September.